Well, welcome everyone. I'm hearing the uh, digital tones from around my uh, devices and around my house that the uh, hour of 11 a.m. has struck. So perhaps it's time to begin. Uh, I see we have some attendees and I see we have one phone call in listener. Welcome. Uh, I'm afraid some of our visual presentation will be uh, a little more difficult, but uh, uh, we're happy to have you anyway. So uh, welcome everyone to the second of our third food rescue webinar sessions, this one covering how to reduce food waste. Uh, we have three very fine uh, presenters today. We have uh, Eric Bradley from the Scott County Health Department, Dave Phillips uh, from the Asbury Methodist Church Garden Ministry, and uh, Pastor Donnie Plemons, in this case live on tape, uh, from the Grace Bible Free Fellowship uh, Church Food Pantry. And we will be recording this presentation, and uh, you will later receive information about how this recording can be accessed. Uh, also, please feel free to submit any questions you have in the Q&A area uh, of the meeting. Note that there is a Q&A area rather than just the chat, so we'll be monitoring that uh, Q&A uh, area. So anyway, uh, with all that said, we're again, we're happy to have you, and it is now my pleasure to introduce Eric Bradley from the Scott County Health Department. All right, so I'm gonna talk about, uh, like Pete said, my name is Eric Bradley, I'm the Environmental Health Manager for the Scott County Health Department. So I'm gonna talk about this morning about the Good Samaritan Food Donation um, Act. Um, this basically allows um, licensed food establishments to donate food without any um, liability whatsoever. So, um, Public Law 104-210 was signed into Congress in 1996. Um, it allows licensed food establishments, food establishments to donate unused and leftover food to nonprofit agencies, um, provided that the food is suitable for consumption. Um, that, like I said before, frees that licensed facility from any civil or criminal liability. So what, what's safe to donate? Well, you have your prepackaged commercial food, um, any prepared food that the licensed facility has made, as long as it's um, less than seven days old. Any food that has been properly frozen. Any hot food that, has been, that was properly made and then was properly cooled, which we'll talk about here shortly. Um, cold food has been kept at 41 degrees or lower. Um, food that's been properly labeled, so you know exactly where, what it is and where it's been, um, how long it's been um, made. Then any um, raw fruits or vegetables. The foods that are not safe, is any food that's been on a self-service buffet, um, part of a catering operation, or anything that's been prepared at a home. Um, if food is more than seven days old, it cannot be used. Um, if it's severely dented, can, um, because the can's dented enough, the seals on the end could have been opened and contamination could have gotten into it. Um, any other type of food with a compromised packaging, um, food that's been unlabeled, or any type of spoiled produce. So some tips to keep food safe. Um, we want to make sure that any food that was cooked has been properly cooled. Um, basically, you have six hours. It starts out, um, once the food gets to 135 degrees, you have two hours to cool it to 70 degrees. Then you have an additional four hours to cool it from 70 to 41. Um, you also want to make sure that you maintain the food temperatures. Any food that's been supposed to be kept cold while it's been in your um, control, it's been maintained at 41 degrees or lower or the hot food has been at 135 degrees or hotter. All prepared food should be stored above raw meat. That's because with raw meat, um, it was the leak, it would drop down on prepared food, um, and some of that prepared food is not gonna be reheated to the temperature it needs to kill any possible bacteria that could leak on it. You also wanna make sure um, food should be stored at least six inches off the floor. Um, that's all, not just for cleaning, but also you, so you can keep track of pest control. You can see if there's any pests running around and getting near it. Food should also be properly covered. It should also be properly labeled. You can look down here in the right corner. Um, you want to label it what it is. I mean, there's two options. You can either label it with the time and date that you made it or the time and date that it needs to be thrown out. Um, as long as it's the same across to your whole facility, um, you can do either one. It, it's better if you do both, but the main thing as long as we know and you know that it's either the, the start date or the end date of when it's got to be thrown out. So who accepts food donations? Um, we have a wide variety of nonprofit um, relief agencies here in the Quad Cities. Uh, the Food Rescue Partnership encourages food donations to the Churches United and the River Bend Food Bank. Um, 
Churches United. They have, sorry, went too far. They have 30, they oversee 36 food pantries, three hot meal sites, and a shelter. If you have a food, don food donation, please contact Betsy at this number or her email. She will get a volunteer to come by and pick up the food and get it to one of their, um, one of their pantry or meal sites. Um, for the Riverbend Food Bank, if you have a, um, a donation of prepared food, please contact Chelsea. If you're a retail store and you just have prepackaged food, you can contact Mark. Um, if you have a large um, donation, which you need a forklift or a box truck, um, please contact Jeff. So this is the United States uh, Environmental Protection Agency Food Recovery Hierarchy. It kind of shows how different ways you can go to keep food from getting into the landfill. So the one where we really focus on is feeding hungry people. But if the food is not suitable for human consumption, we do have some other options. Um, we can use it as animal feed. Um, it can be used in industry. Um, it can be used to recover energy. And we can also compost it. So if you have any questions about um, the animal feed, industrial use, or composting, you can contact Julie Plummer at the Iowa Waste Exchange. She's with the Eastern Iowa Community College. And if you have any, any questions about just donating food, um, please contact your, the health department of your restaurants in, either Scott County, Rock Island County, or the city of East Moline, city of Moline, or the city of Rock Island. I'll leave those numbers up there. And that's all I have, Pete. Thank you, Eric. Um, I did also want to mention that at the Riverbend Food Bank, uh, they have a website where they list all their uh, associated uh, hunger relief agencies, pantries, etc. So if someone had a smaller uh, donation uh, and they didn't want to go all the way to the food bank, they could get a list of a pantry that maybe is near them if they had just a, fall, a few small things to drop off to. So that also works. Uh, do we have any? Uh, do we have any questions? Uh, for uh, for Eric, there are no questions at this time. All right, thank you. Uh, I think that we will. Uh, Eric has a may not be around. He has a prior uh, uh, engagement that is going to take him away from us here. But if <laughs> um, if there is a question specific to that, uh, we'll do our best to answer it. And if we can't, we'll get an answer to you. So if something else occurs to you, don't hesitate. So, thanks, Pete. Yeah, and thank you, Eric. Uh, nicely done. We appreciate your your efforts. Let me start my video back up here. So, now I would like to uh, take this opportunity to introduce our next speaker, Dave Phillips. And uh, I'm going to, and we see you there, Dave. Welcome. Good to see you. And I'm going to uh, start to uh, introduce Dave and his garden ministry by way of a video that was produced by PBS Iowa as part of their Letters from Iowa program and that will be aired publicly in November. So uh, let's take a look at that first and then Dave will, will tell us a little bit more. Growing up on my farm, my dad had a saying, We're not getting the volume, Pete. Of all the garden seeds that you plant, Better. I've always thought the tomato seed is just amazing. I mean, you plant one little seed, and each of these plants we may get 40 to 50 pounds of tomatoes off of, eight pounds or so off of one chicken. Total harvest last year was 35,000 pounds. Probably a rabbit doing his thing. We didn't waste one. This is our Wednesday volunteer group and they're preparing lunch and we'll start serving at 11. During COVID, we've been supplying to-go meals. We closed our dining room back in March. This is our head cook, Lori Jones, kitchen manager and volunteers can come around and you can see our back kitchen area here. This is donations from Asbury uh, Methodist. Uh, we process so much of the garden ministry's food. So we process a lot of food for women. Part of the mission of, of the vine 
is to make sure that our, our guests get food, but hopefully nutritious foods and as, as much as we can provide. And uh, that one way we can do that is by providing them with the veggies they need. Five hundred and eleven plants. We average about well that would be about forty pounds per plant, which is pretty good production. Of the five hundred and eleven plants, all but ten of them were blown down with that windstorm. We stood them all back up the following morning. Here's an example of one that didn't make it. Put the tomatoes on it, ripen. Look at those little ones forming. <laughs> I mean, we we are far from being near the end. Like I said, they, they'll keep producing until the first frost. Growing up on a farm and having a big garden, one or two things can happen. You never want to step foot in a garden again, or you have a passion for gardening, and I took the latter route. I'm a member of the Asbury United Methodist Church. Boy, what a good turnout. In the fall of 2001, after 9-11, our church was looking for uh, new outreach ministries. And uh, growing up on a farm, I thought, well, how about a garden ministry? So one Sunday morning, I borrowed some bib overalls and a straw hat from a former pastor and got a hoe and a red handkerchief around my neck and one in my back pocket and strolled up the middle aisle of Asbury Church in Bettendorf and went up to the pulpit and said, we're going to kick off a new ministry. And that's how it all got started. We need a lot of people preparing cages. I worked at Rock Island Arsenal. They had garden plots. So I had 12 of my co-workers sign up for a plot. And the first year we distributed 2,200 pounds to three different uh, organizations. Get it lined up, sort of centered, and then just kind of go like that. Work it around so the tines go in the soil. It seems like we always have enough volunteers to do what needs to be done on a given night. We love to give tours of the garden. So we take people on tours of the garden and, and they just can't believe it the magnitude. This year we have 511 tomato plants. We planted 300 pounds of seed potatoes, cut them up. So we've got 2,400 hills of potatoes, planted about 300 uh, cabbage plants, about 300 pepper plants, a lot of watermelon and cantaloupe plants, squash, zucchini. The tomatoes take up maybe a third of an acre. Total harvest last year was 35,000 pounds. Of that, 20,000 were tomatoes. The church has really been so supportive of the ministry. Two different churches, different denominations working together. Uh, what's not to like about that? It's an opportunity for churches to work together, partner together, uh, which uh, I think is a healthy thing. It represents who God is as far as we're concerned. God loving the world, wanting to love the world, and people who have needs. <clears throat> so we work together in partnership to see that accomplished. It's, it's exciting. And of course, Dave uh, and uh, the people of the Ted Asbury, they do the really hard work. So the last couple of weeks, actually, we've been pulling thousands of pounds. Hmm. About two buckets to a roll, that's pretty good, you know. And they're all nice and uh, firm. My wife grew up on a farm, so she's a gardener, and just like, it's like, oh my gosh, it's like rows and rows, hundreds of plants. Yeah, a lot of tomato picking over the years. Well, I was a former farmer, so I decided to come out here and work in the dirt. <laughs> I've heard Dave at church talk about these enormous harvests that he's had. I've really admired what he does, and it just inspires you to go out and help. I know there's a lot of food insecurity out there. So if we can kind of help with that, I think that's great. 
I just discovered it after I'd worked all day and come out here and pick tomatoes. You, it was a very calming experience. No telephones, no emails, no people yelling for things for you to do things. You just out here picking the tomatoes and join with the friends, and that's about it. Ministry and serving. Uh, that's at the very core of what that word means. Yeah. Out there in 95, 96 degree weather, working a garden, providing food for people, that is washing the feet of people. And that's ministry. <laughs> Jesus said in Matthew 25, feed those who are hungry and thirsty. And so we've been doing it for 32 years. We're giving to try to help people. It's not, not sitting in a pew. It's out touching people where they live. We're probably doing around 500 to 600 families a week. This garden ministry, like you, these tomatoes here right now, are the ones that really helped us kick it into gear in the produce line. It's a powerful, powerful ministry. We're serving about, uh, with breakfast, probably 225 to 300 people a day, depending on <coughs> here at the vine. Uh, we serve anyone who walks in the door. No questions asked. And uh, uh, we want to respect them and their, their unique uh, life circumstances. Dave Phillips and his, his team uh, at Asbury have been incredible supporters of Cafe on Vine. And uh, it just allows us to do the right thing for our guests and, and serving them good food. Since the inception of the ministry, we've harvested and distributed about 585,000 pounds of vegetables. I joke with my, uh, my volunteers that uh, I have a goal to, uh, to reach a million pounds, but I figured out if we average per year what we've been averaging in the last two or three years, 35,000. I need to uh, keep going for about uh, 12 more years and we'll be there. <laughs> this garden ministry provides a meaningful purpose for people. And I think that's why we get the volunteers. Hey, it's a nice evening. Here's not nice great. I sit here in the tree. Uh -huh. People don't have to look too far to find a way to volunteer. The need is there all over the place. And those people who like to garden, this is a great opportunity for them. They enjoy being out. And it's a win-win. Thank you, Dave. Uh, congratulations to you and your uh, ministry on this PBS special. I have to correct myself. That's greetings from Iowa, not letters from Iowa. But that will be uh, uh, airing in November, I believe. So now it's a good opportunity for you, uh, now that you're with us here, Dave, to uh, um, tell us more about uh, the garden ministry. I'm Dave Phillips, the uh, coordinator of the Ecumenical Garden Ministry. As I provide background information on our ministry, uh, there'll be some uh, slides uh, being shown that were taken of the garden. The ministry was initiated in the spring of 2002 as an outreach ministry of our church. Isaiah chapter 58 verse 10 provided the biblical inspiration for starting the ministry. God commanded, feed my hungry. Our mission statement is to provide fresh vegetables to those individuals who otherwise not have access to them. The ministry was started on Rock Island Arsenal, where I was employed. Garden plots, 20 feet by 20 feet, were available for employees. The 13 plots covered about one-tenth of an acre. We harvested 2,200 pounds that year. The harvest was distributed to Valley Shelter, which housed Trebled Youth, John Lewis Coffee House, a meal site in downtown Davenport, 
serving hundreds of needy individuals, and lend a hand, a low-income senior living apartment complex in Davenport. Bill Wondrum of the Quad City Times published an article in the paper after that gardening season, which resulted in the ministry being offered a seven-tenths acre plot on Valley Drive in Bettendorf. Over the years, we have gardened at different locations to include Mount Joy, the Brockway Farm in Bettendorf, and a personal residence in West Davenport. About 12 years ago, the Grace Evangelical Free Church in Davenport graciously offered space for our ministry. We now garden about an acre of their property. The site is a godsend, fertile soil, access to water, and conveniently located for our volunteers. A true blessing to, to me is that it overlooks a youth baseball complex. What could be better than having the opportunity to garden while watching youth play baseball? The ministry had been blessed over the years with the support of a number of businesses and individuals to include Elmer Mass, a farmer who operates the Little Red Barn Garden Nursery on Utica Ridge in Davenport. In the early years of the ministry, Elmer provided many of our vegetable plants. Wallace's Garden Center in Bettendorf, for a number of years, they have provided, at no cost to the ministry, plants started from seed in their greenhouses. Last year, over 500 tomato plants, about 300 cabbage plants, around 500 green pepper plants, as well as cucumber, muskmelon, and watermelon plants were donated. Doug Ford and Sons Business in Geneseo has provided fertilizer and other garden products over the years at no cost. Early on in the life of the ministry, a connection was made with a local antique tractor club. Over the years, Tony Kanabi of that club has plowed and disc our garden plots. Mike Lanfear, a Bettendorf resident, power tills our plot each spring to get it ready for planting. The ministry has truly been blessed over the years with a number of volunteers to include members from other churches, a Girl Scout troop, students from the North Scott and Pleasant Valley High Schools to fulfill required community service hours, and other individuals in our local community who want to be involved in helping to feed the hungry. The ministry provides an opportunity for individuals to satisfy an innate need that I believe we all have. That is, to have a meaningful purpose in our lives to make a positive impact on the lives of others. The ministry always welcomes new volunteers. The ministry distributes the harvested vegetables to around 20 local organizations to include food pantries, meal sites, home shelters, and senior living apartment complexes. In addition, some of the harvest is distributed directly to needy families. One of the food pantries is a Grace Bible Fellowship's Food Pantry in Moline, which serves over 600 families. Pastor Donnie Clemens will share more about his food pantry later on in this webinar. A comment about Pastor Donnie. The ministry has partnered with him for many years, and we cherish the opportunity to work with him. We know that all vegetables provided to his pantry will be distributed to the needy. He is receptive to taking tomatoes that we refer to as rejects because they don't really look pretty and provides them to some of his pantry's recipients to be canned and or frozen for later use. It is a bit sad, although in a way welcome, when the first frost arrives, officially ending the gardening season. It is a downer knowing that with the end of the season, we can no longer address taking a bite out of hunger in the local community. Now for a short recap of this gardening season, we harvested over 34,000 pounds to include over 20,000 pounds of tomatoes. 
this is truly amazing as the derecho flattened almost all of our 511 tomato plants. We picked up over a thousand pounds of green tomatoes that fell off the vines and they were well received by our usual recipients. We were able to stand back up most of the plants, losing only about 20 of them. Over the life of the ministry, over the last 19 years, we have harvested over 600 pounds of vegetables. Hunger does not end when the garden season is over for the year. However, a new opportunity has serviced to fill this downtime from gardening. A connection has been made with a local store which is graciously providing us food items to include frozen meat that have reached out, that have reached their expiration dates. These items are being pro provided to some of our food pantries. It would be so awesome if all grocery stores and restaurants in our local community would make available food items that could be distributed to address the needs of the hungry in lieu of disposing of them. And with that, Pete, I will turn it back to you. Thank you so much, Dave. Uh, I'm gonna let this uh, presentation run a little bit while I ask you a couple of questions and also point out a special congratulations to you about taking this beyond uh, your garden itself to uh, overall food establishment, food rescue as well. Uh, it's wonderful about how one, one part of a ministry leads to another. And when we first started talking about who we would like to showcase for our webinar, and we talked about your garden ministry, we said, well, it, it's not traditional food rescue because you're planting. Uh, but uh, one of the nice things about the way that you approach your garden is that you still, you know, there can be inevitable waste in a garden and you still waste nothing. You make sure that uh, you use everything. Uh, and uh, the derecho is another good example. Uh, you could have just let said, well, there, that's gone, but no, you jumped right in and make sure you recovered that. Uh, and so the, the fact that you waste as little as is humanly possible from the garden and that you've expanded into the community and doing uh, other kinds of uh, food items and, and protein donations is fantastic. And we congratulate you for that. Thank you so much for that. One thing I did want to ask you if you could uh, sp uh, talk a little bit about any recommendations you have or suggestions about how somebody that wants to uh, get involved with this uh, how they can pursue it, how they can get started themselves, how they can volunteer. Well, you know, what do you, what recommendations do you have to our, to our folks out there? Well, people watching this webinar would like to get involved in our garden ministry. Uh, as I mentioned before, we, we always welcome new volunteers. You can have, never have too many volunteers. I would suggest if you're interested uh, in uh, learning how to get involved uh, to, ca to call our church, Asbury United Methodist Church. Uh, their phone number is 355-5218, and the church secretary will pass on the information to me, and I will get in contact with you. Volunteers, I put on an email uh, list that I use to uh, send out to the volunteers, uh, apprising them of upcoming gardening opportunities. And uh, during the garden season, uh, I send out quite a few emails, uh, letting people know what we're doing, when we're doing it, and what we're doing on a given evening, afternoon, morning, as far as uh, uh, maintaining the garden. Uh, springtime really need a lot of volunteers because when you plant the volume of uh, vegetables that we plant, seeds, plants, uh, one thing that wasn't mentioned in my uh, narrative was uh, we, we planted about 10,000 onion plants last year. So you can imagine how much uh, labor is involved in uh, planting that uh, volume of onion plants and planting 500, over 500 tomato plants also takes a lot of effort. Uh, the way we go about it, uh, it's quite a process. Uh, uh, I figure there's about 12 steps in the way we plant our tomato plants. Uh, as far as planting the plants, putting cages, putting grass around the plants, uh, putting watering cans by the plant to uh, water them during the dry spell. So, um, uh, yeah, we uh, like I say, we need we we'd welcome all the volunteers, and if you're interested, uh, please please call the number that I provided. 
Thanks, Dave. Uh, you mentioned at one point, maybe not here, but we were, when we were talking that there's a, a possibility of a, a community garden being started, maybe in Bettendorf, or uh, that there are other community gardens around that uh, that might give people a chance to get try their hand at gardening, and certainly a donation of produce is a possibility. Well, I haven't ch checked with them lately, but the ISU Extension Office uh, in Bettendorf, off of uh, Utica Ridge, at one time they had individual garden plots that uh, people could sign up for, um, and they had access to water. I, like I said, I haven't checked with them lately. I, I, I assume that it, it continued this year. The people had an opportunity to sign up for, I don't know how big the uh, raised plots were, maybe 10 by 15 feet. We had, there's a uh, park in Bettendorf, the Optimus Park, that uh, is, is not well used. And um, a member of the park board called me and said, would you like, what would you suggest? Could this be a possibility of uh, maybe uh, uh, tilling the area up and uh, making it available for individual garden plots? And we discussed it within our garden ministry, and uh, there, there are several challenges, challenges in doing that, so we haven't really pursued it any further. The big uh, challenge would be access to water, which uh, any garden plots that you develop, you, you need to have water available, available, and I don't know if, if that would be the case. But uh, hopefully it, it is a great idea to have uh, community gardens and for people to have the opportunity to, uh, to uh, garden their own little plot if they don't have room in their, in their backyard. And hopefully uh, this uh, idea will uh, gain traction and and uh, more of the community gardens can uh, can come to fruition. Yeah, thank you, Dave, for that. I appreciate it. Uh, there was uh, uh, we. There's a lot of uh, good things to be done in gardening, and I guess I would encourage anyone that is interested in uh, doing a garden for their own, for donation, or for both, uh, reach out to your uh, the Iowa State Extension. Uh, as Dave mentioned, there's a, uh, the University of Illinois Extension in Milan. Also, both have master gardener programs. Uh, they uh, have horticulture question and answer uh, opportunities available. So, uh, there's there's uh, those extensions are available to uh, to help people uh, to get started with their gardening. So, again, thank you so much, Dave, about that. And questions about Dave's ministry will be addressed after our next presentation. And so uh, now to learn a little bit more about the, uh, the recipient side of the equation, it's my pleasure to introduce Grace Bible Fellowship Food Pantry. We see, uh, heard a little bit about them, and I'm going to start again uh, following our pattern here with a, uh, uh, a story that was first aired on WQAD TV8 back in April. So let me uh, introduce it like that to begin with, and then we'll, we'll move on. lives, especially families in need. Demand of area food pantries has never been higher, and as News Ace Bianca Reyes reports, one local church is stepping up for those who need it the most. It's new tonight at 6. Cars line the streets, and people come protected. You can see it strung out all the way down the parking lot today. Pastor Donnie Plemons says this is what a typical Saturday looks like nowadays. We're serving usually somewhere between 2,500 and 3,000 families per month. It, it, right now it's fluctuated because of our situation, but the amount of people we've had coming through has definitely increased. A volunteer for over a year, Chris Gingring says the coronavirus outbreak has left many low-income families with no place to get groceries. I'm sure nobody's working a lot. There's not a lot of money out there for the people. And, you know, you go to the grocery stores and the shelves are empty. So, you know, this is a good spot to come get what you need. And whatever you need, the Grace Bible Food Pantry has it. Everything. <laughs> We have walk-in freezer, walk-in coolers. We got lemons. We got limes. We got grapes. And we got cabbage. We got uh, cauliflower, broccoli. You name it. Fully stocked, fully loaded, just like your typical grocery store. Only it's all free. It's food donated by local food banks and grocery stores. 
allowing Chris and more than 50 other volunteers to continue serving our most vulnerable community. In Moline, Bianca Reyes, WQAD News 8. And the pantry is open on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. So, uh, as we saw in that video, uh, Pastor Donnie Plemons uh, and his food pantry accept donations from the garden ministry that Dave has described it. So I will toss this back to uh, Dave to formally introduce his, his friend, uh, Pastor Donnie. It is, yes, it's now my pleasure to introduce Pastor Donnie. As mentioned before, his food pantry serves over 700 families. Donnie is an energizer bunny. He's so passionate in his extraordinary efforts in striving to meet the needs of the hungry. A year or two ago, he was having uh, trouble with his hip. In fact, uh, he had to wait for surgery for, I don't know, six months or so. And it was almost like it was bone on bone. And he never missed a step. He just kept doing what he does and, and just continuing to put in so many hours to uh, – to serving the, the, the hungry people in the local community. So uh, uh, Pastor Donnie now has uh, a presentation. I just to express how thrilled we are to be partners in trying to reclaim food and keep it going to some it's been a real thrill for us to be part with uh, Dave Phillips and the Garden Ministry. Wow, I have to tell you, we've received thousands of pounds, tons of food from them. And it's been really thrilling as we've been able to give it, give it away. Uh, they would say, well, now these are free checks. You know, that was the one. <laughs> but we, usually we've got somebody who make it salsa, some kind of tomato paste or something, or whatever. So we hardly any of it is wasted. And that's that's what we're striving for, is try to help all of this work together so we're not losing a lot of food just to the dump, you know, and to the trash. And the Lord has helped us. And one of the things that I think has been a little added to it is that often we have uh, farmers that will take the food that we eat that's already kind of gone bad, especially in produce, that's what happens. And they're able to take that and feed it to animals. So in one sense, is getting back into the human line anyway. So we're thrilled about all of those things. Uh, it's been a, been a real pleasure to be part of Group Ben Food. We have been since almost began. We started with them about a few years ago. And we've been working with them for across the years. And what a joy to get for Tom and Steve from the past. And now Mike and all of the crew of the chef. And Larry that just retired. Joel brings us food. One of the things interesting, through all this time, uh, they have been bringing food to us five days a week, Monday through Friday, and using premium sized truck. And then they'll say, hey, listen, bring your truck back and get it on the road. So we're very thankful because there's a big crowd that comes. Uh, I wish we had a picture yesterday. I wish I would have thought to take one for you. But I usually come and you know, I have prayer with everybody. I just say, hey, we want to thank God for the food. Just informal, nothing, you know, trying to force. Me. And the folks seem to enjoy that. And the line started right here at the door, but all the way down to the end of the parking lot and down the street. That was just the beginning. At about 11 o'clock, we were trying to wind down by the end of the camp. It was still out about 150 feet out. So uh, we've been able to feed a lot of folks with a lot of food. Thanks to the food bank, we have three jewel stores that really give to us a lot. We have five high bees, one of them really pours it on us. We have Old Town Bakery on top of the hill, Panera Bread around the corner, all kinds of people. In fact, when I stepped in the door a while ago, there were two boxes of food sitting up there that somebody had just brought and given us. And truckers will call and say, hey, look, I got some food. Would you please take it? Folks will come by. And it. So it's been a real thrill that we've been able to take that food and get it in the families. Yes, there is some loss because... When we get produce, it's usually already going over, except for the garden industry, that's real fresh. But it's starting to go over, and we really try hard to keep that all rolling and working it. Well, do we ever have wonderful produce? 
I, I don't know if we have 50 right now, probably somewhere around 40 different people that don't listen. And we go every day of the week. In fact, even on Sunday, we're trying to reach out to people. Too. But we're open Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, uh, officially. But we, we get food every day. In fact, I have people that will help and get food out to those that are really in the list. I can't do much of that, but we try try to reach everybody that we possibly can. And the numbers are really, you know, they're up there. Uh, and there have been, uh, I, I'm just thinking right now of a lady that for several years has been coming in, and she's told us and told the folks from Riverbend and said, wow, if it wasn't for this pantry, we could not exist. Her daughter is a little bit in lip, but she said, I use everything to keep us alive. Don't have any money for food. Well, we're glad we've got it. And we just keep on pouring it out. And thankful. We, can, we, we try to give everybody everything we've got every time. Our aim is to try to empty it all out. We don't want to hold anything back. And everybody, that's what really thrills me about our church crowd, the crowd that we're, everybody's welcome. And Mike, the, the leader at the food bank, said, Donnie, I want you to get it. And so that's what we're trying to do. We don't try to limit anybody. We try to give everything we can. And uh, usually you'll be watching out there, and they're going to this grocery cart. is full and running over. <laughs> uh, we've had two or three stores that gave us their own grocery carts, you know, that's still in good shape. But we use that. We always a challenge is the cardboard making it try to be as clean as we can. That's a challenge. So, but the Lord has helped us. We've been so thankful. Our, the base of our ministry is Matthew chapter 25. Jesus said, I was hungry and thirsty, and you gave me to eat and drink. And they said, well, Lord, we never did see you that way. But he said, as much as you've done it on these brothers and sisters of mine, you've done it to me. So, that's our privilege. We're, we're serving Christ as we serve people, as we give. And poor what a thrill it is. So, you know, and People learning to pull together. I, I think about everybody. There's churches that give us, give us food and money, uh, but they have left over like from their food bank or their food pantry. They call, come and get it, because we know you'll take it. <laughs> and we do. And it's been real thrilling. Really interesting and exciting ministry as we try to reach out to everybody that we possibly can. Thank you for the opportunity to talk to you a little bit and partner with you and partner with all these others. I, I wish I could remember all the things about it, but uh, it's an exciting journey. Never are we bored. <laughs> We're always stretching. How much more can we do to try to touch other people? So can you tell us a little more about how your food pantry and Dave's Garden Ministry got together? Well, I'm trying to think about that myself. How did we get started? I, I, I really don't know that detail, except somehow or another, Somebody got us together, and, and they started their ministry, a dark ministry. So he called and said, hey, Donnie, I got all these things, and would you come? And so at first, we were the ones that would probably take probably half of it. And as it's gone on, it got bigger, and other people have got it. And then they got some folks that are delivering. Kevin really helps out all the time. All those are wonderful people. They've got a wonderful crew, too. And uh, I, I don't think I would answer how we got started, but... The, but we became real good friends, and did the Optimist Morning Optimist Club in Davenport, and that's kind of how it got all together, too, and they helped us. Uh, we're looking forward to Thanksgiving baskets, that tradition with us. We used to do about a 1,000 baskets down a little bit to the food banks out other places they're doing, but uh, we're hoping this year the Lord help us get We've been given everything away to us. Lord help us to get it together. But... What so many folks do help us. It it is really thrilling. I wish I could wish I could remember everybody that just pours it out for us and helps us. We have dear friends give us money. Folks down the street, neighbors come in and give us money to keep uh, I wouldn't say we was exactly much with money most of the time. We just got our nose above the water. <laughs> but we make it. And one of our principles is we don't buy if we can't afford it. We don't have the money. So the food bank works for that way, and I, I really appreciate it. We enjoy it. Dave has been such a blessing, though. Man, wasn't it? And all those guys, we become real good friends. Thankful for it. So do you receive rescued food from Bob Vogelbaugh's annual community Thanksgiving dinner for your own Thanksgiving dinner meal? 
that you yes, do later? We do. Yep, we do. Uh, every year, you call and say, hey, look, I got it ready. And sometimes I've gotten a lot. And so I, I told you, okay, bag and team, you know. So those folks, are, what they'll do, they'll get it ready in plates and different things. They get the big we'll share. We, we, we share with other families and with the Rock Island Mission and different ones all around. I'm glad to. And uh, so out goes that food. I'm really glad because it's not wasted. So you've been doing this 33 years. How has this year been different or more challenging? Well, the big challenge, I think, it's been harder for folks to have enough funds to get all the food. And we've had more of a consistent crowd coming three days a week. Used to, it would be Tuesday was small, Thursday a little bit bigger, and Saturday was the big one. Well, now Tuesday is big. And, and but Thursday maybe a little bigger than Saturday, just like yesterday. We probably over 300 families yesterday. And then it just poured out. We're glad for it. It's real good. But I think we're doing, I think we're reaching more people. And we, we do definitely have more food for all of them. Uh, right there, we have the van over there, pickups. We got a box truck. Car Mark gets that box truck, please. And uh, man, that's been wonderful. I have an old 1916 sitting out there. It, it got stolen a few weeks ago. But it got it back. And that, I, I carry two pallets of food, three trips of, of a day. Well, we have the box truck, make one trip. <laughs> and it's been real, you just back it, and then around the other side, we take the board truck. Unload, put in that place where you saw the other side. It's been exciting. So we have to uh, thank uh, Pastor Donnie for appearing, uh, even though his uh, schedule did not allow it to do live. But we thank him for uh, for allowing me to go in and, and record him. So uh, I think we have two questions. Very good. That's what I'm going to now. So thank you for that. You ready for him? We are ready. We'll do our best here. Okay. Um, first one came through the chat. Um, I'm curious how you decide how to plant and how much, in your opinion, what are the best vegetables oops, to plant? to get them out to people before they start to go bad. I'm doing a study and participants are saying they get a lot of onions and potatoes, probably because those are long life vegetables. We want to create vegetable boxes. What do you suggest? Well, our, the main vegetables we plant and the reason we we sort of uh, concentrate on, on these particular vegetables. Or I, I think they're staple vegetables, potatoes, onions, tomatoes. Uh, I guess you could toss green peppers into that. Um, tomatoes or onions and potatoes, they store very well. Uh, tomatoes, if, you're, if you were putting them in individual food baskets, uh, if you pick them right, you know, they won't last over a number of days. But onions and potatoes and... Uh, uh, will last for several days without going bad. Uh, but we also, like I say, we, we grow vet, uh, muskmelon and watermelon. And that's sort of a, I would say, sort of a luxury item for people coming to food pantries and, and, uh, and having it available at meal sites. Uh, if, if you're poor, Buying muskmelons and watermelons are probably not on the top of your shopping list if, if you go out and try to get some food for your family. Uh, potatoes, onions, and uh, tomatoes are. Uh, so, um, but like the slideshow that was shown previously um, showed, uh, we plant all different types of vegetables. Uh, uh, so, and cucumbers would be another uh, vegetable that would be be good to put in a food basket. They they um, last over a period of time. 
Okay, uh, this is not really a question, but more of a comment from someone who volunteers at the ball fields next to the garden. I always look forward to walking down the path between the gardens. It's amazing to watch the garden progress throughout the years. Thank you for all your hard work. Well, you know, that's interesting. As I mentioned in, in my narrative, I, I really enjoy gardening, looking down on, on the baseball complex. And also, as I mentioned before, the different people come out to the garden site and, and uh, we love to give people tours of the garden. We take them around, show them the different uh, areas of the garden, different vegetables uh, growing in, in those different areas. And, and it's, it's just so fun to show people the garden. Uh, one thing I would like to add, and I was remiss in my narrative not mentioning it, I want to give shout outs to, uh, I mentioned some uh, organizations and individuals that have supported the ministry over the years. I, I really want to uh, acknowledge the Bettendorf Rotary Club. They provided us funding over the years, uh, money that they raised through their annual uh, Lobster Fest fundraiser, and also the Quad City Morning Optimist Club. They provided us uh, uh, significant funding over the years to help us fund uh, the ministry. On the average, it, it takes about uh, oh, around $3,000 a year to cover the expenses associated with, uh, with uh, running this ministry. So uh, with the help of organizations like, uh, like the uh, Bettendorf Rotary Club and Quad City Morning Optimist Club, and we have funding provided by our local church also that helps us cover our uh, annual expenses. Thanks, Dave. Uh 34,000 pounds of food for uh, $3,000. You get a pretty good bang for your buck there. Uh, and that's thanks to a, to a lot of wonderful organizations uh, in the community. So I'd like to thank you and all our speakers, Eric, for his uh, excellent presentation on the uh, uh, Good Samaritan Act, uh, you about our garden, about your garden, and, and Pastor Donnie Plemons. Uh, there was uh, uh, very inspiring, and uh, we appreciate all the work that uh, you all have done for this and and the, the work rescuing food not just feeding the hungry but rescuing food rescuing produce to uh, feed the community so i thank uh, you and i thank all our attendees uh for coming too and uh, also to remind you all to make note of uh our webinar three which is a, a week from today october 22nd again at 11 a.m uh, this webinar will be recognizing food rescue warriors and partners in our community. It's been a challenging year this year. Uh, unfortunately, there's uh, been increasing uh, food insecurity. Uh, we live in uh, difficult times, and yet this is an opportunity to celebrate organizations, partners, and people that have stepped up and done just outstanding work in our community uh, in the area of food rescue and feeding the hungry. So, um, I promise you this will be a, another excellent session. And so mark your calendars, register. Uh, that's available uh, online at our uh, website and at our uh, Facebook site, uh, Food Rescue QC. So uh, we look forward to seeing you then, and we thank you all for attending. <laughs>